Your film is almost done. You've worked on it for days and months and you're really close to release, but you don't have any posters. What do you do? Production needs at least a poster to go with your film so that you can market it to distributors and audiences. Otherwise, there's really not going to be a good uh, marketing landscape to capture uh, the audiences that you want, right? So, uh, you don't have time in your hands. And what do you do? Well, stop panicking and just to help you out, here's a few trendy compositions and effects that you can use to create a poster as fast as possible. Number 1. Color First thing that you need to put down is the colors you're going to use for your poster. It will set the tone for the viewer saying what your film is truly about. Quick guideline for this thanks to uh, Vanity Fair. If your film is a thriller, horror or detective movie, go blue. If you have an action movie in your hands, great work. Go black, white, orange with very heavy contrast. If it's a drama, go with white with your characters over it telling what the conflict is going to be. A good example of this can be found in Forrest Gump. If it's an independent film and it's a pretty light-hearted movie that you're making, go with yellow. It is the easiest color to catch your audience's attention. Now, let's say you're a fan of red. What do you do then? If you have a romantic movie or you have an action movie with a lot of blood and gore in it, you'd really like to go red on that poster. Quentin Tarantino uses a lot of uh, red in his posters, except Kill Bill, which was yellow because the character had a yellow color. So when deciding color, always look for what is the most dividing factor about the movie that you're making. That color, if there is any specific color in your movie, that can be used on your poster as well. But even after all of that, let's say you're stumped and you don't know what to do, you have a easy way out. Teal and orange. From the 2000s, you can see there are many posters which are just teal and orange. These are very high contrasty uh, pictures because it's like hot and cool and it's very contrasting. Uh, it is very overused in the current landscape, but it is also a fast way of making things work. So there's that. Number two, composition. There's really not much to go about in composition because it totally depends on the story you're trying to tell. The most important tool one can use is the negative space which gets overlooked sometimes because it's it really needs to be thoughtful depending on the story you're making. If your main character is lonely throughout the film, you might want to isolate him in one corner of your poster and keep the other space as blank. That would really help accentuating and letting the viewers know that your movie is about loneliness. Another a composition effect that you can use is double exposure. It is very overused in the current landscape because of its ability to highlight internal conflicts of characters. Drama and psychological thrillers love to use this trick, but as much as it provides a great insight into your film, it can also take away from it if it isn't implemented right. There are a ton of films with bad double exposure posters out there, so unless you know what you're doing and have a great logic behind the design, I personally wouldn't recommend going for it. Act Collage You've probably seen it even if you're not looking for posters, you know. It's a great way to introduce your main character and your side characters in a small poster format because you get to put everyone's faces here and there. It's, it's pretty fun, actually, not gonna lie. One of the very first films that used this technique was Casablanca, a truly monumental film. Uh, put that on the charts for it to be used later on when George Lucas came up with Star Wars. Star Wars, ever since the 70s, have started using this format of actor collages on their posters and they have been very uh, effective. If you're looking at movie posters after the 2000s, you can see that Hollywood studios have really not set themselves back from this actor collage effect that they put on their posters. It's not just Hollywood we're talking about. Even in Bollywood, we see the similar use of the actor collage because it is a very effective and easy way of making a good film poster that's attractive to people. In big studio films, it is often contracted for actor faces to be featured in the poster 
the larger the pay, the larger the face on the Momo poster. But everything has limits. If you do not have to feature every person that appears on your film, do not feature them. Or your poster would turn out to be something like um, Avengers Endgame. Yeah, so, uh, so don't do it, okay? Just, just don't. So you want to make the poster fast, huh? Trajan. Wait, you have time to make the poster? Oh, well, then use a condensed all caps font to underline the cast and crew at the bottom of the poster, if you want. The cast can be written on top separately. If your uh, film has standout actors, then you might want to change it accordingly from left to right because higher paid actors get put on the left and lower paid actors get put on the right. Along with this, try to separate your title font from the rest of the fonts you used in the poster. It helps your title to stand out. Trajan has been a very good choice for the industry as a go-to for titles on the poster in recent years. It has earned the reputation of being called the movie font because of this overuse. But personally, I believe there is so many more creative ways to write titles for movies. Using Trajan just feels boring. Wait, so you got the font down and you have the title on your hands. But where do you place it? I mean, you can't just place it in the center, right? Like, that would just look bad. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> why, would you, why would you do that? Well, depending on the placement of the content of your poster, there is usually two options for the title to be put. One on the center top third, and the other one is the below third. Unless you are playing with negative spaces, you won't be having any other option for title placement. Along with this, finish your poster off with logos of production to the top corners of the poster and voila! You have a nice looking film poster ready to be released to attract audiences to your film. Just like that. Now posters are art. And art needs time. But the commercial machine of films after the 2000s have really churned out movie posters that aren't really that great. I mean, when was the last time you saw a movie poster and you were like, damn. The conventions of movie posters that have been highlighted throughout this video, that are just something that can make you a poster really fast. It's not something that's artful. These conventions show that movie posters nowadays are just, you know, a tick in the box. There's an entire world of untapped poster art waiting to happen. And who is that on? If us, only if we would think a little, then only can we come up with posters which make the world think. So that was our list of things that can really help you technically make a good poster. I hope it helped you. And if so, don't forget to drop a sub for the channel because um, that would really help us and we would really appreciate it. And see you in the next video.